The train stopped in front of one of the stops. A lot of people came out from there, but one especially stood out. A brunette with short black hair, in a strange grey robe and with a chain around his neck. The guy is raising his hand to hide from the hot rays of the sun. The talcum powder teacher didn't explain anything to him, but he called him here. He didn't even know how to look for her in this place full of other people. Because of the heat, sweat dripped from him in rivulets. The guy even wondered why it's hotter here than in the Middle East. If you rewind time and remember what happened before, you can find out that the guy is a super agent of a mysterious organization. Recently, he was in a desolate land where a storm was raging, walking in a military bulletproof vest. The guy examined this place complaining that he did not have enough money and somehow he had to earn it. Entering the base, the guy put down his helmet inside and said that he should rest a little. There are numerous weapons on the walls of the military warehouse, but he did not pay attention to them. While he was sighing from time to time, the radio started working, but it was very quiet, which is why the guy clamped one ear and shouted for the master to speak louder because he could not be heard. And then a loud voice came from the radio telling the guy that he had bad news. The owner of the voice is dying and if the guy wants to break up his marriage, then he must go back. If he is lucky, the teacher will contact him again. By the way, the guy's name was Chunan. Immediately after this shout, the radio went off, and the guy looked at him in disbelief. That's how Chu Nan went in search of his bride to divorce her. The sun was shining brightly in the sky, and so Chu Nan walked through this area with a cloak covering his head so as not to get a sunstroke. All the moisture has disappeared in his mouth, and his lips are dry. It was too hot, feeling the irresistible heat. The guy couldn't resist and put his hand on the shoulder of a passerby, which scared him a lot, because right now the guy looked like a very suspicious type. When he, with the face of a third-rate villain magician, asked a passerby if he knew something about Minchin University, the passerby screamed loudly out of fright and ran away, and at the same time shouted that he did not want to die. From this behavior, the guy was at a loss and decided that of all the adequate people, he turned to some kind of madman, sighing heavily. The guy with complex feelings thought that really people in this era are so indifferent that they don't even want to help with the road. Suddenly, from the other side, a beautiful girlish voice was heard asking the guy if he had come to work. The guy, surprised, turned his head and asked what they were saying to him. On, a tan beauty in Chinese Kipao smiled and said that she had one job. Was she interested in him? The guy sighed and shook his head and asked for forgiveness, saying that he was not interested. The girl with the birch eyes was slightly surprised and said that if this was the case, then the guy might forget. When she turned around and wanted to leave, the guy already panicked and stopped her, asking how much she was paying. The guy was thinking to himself that he needed to earn some money to buy clothes before he filed for divorce. The girl turned with a wide smile and said that the guy should not worry about paying, because she is worth her job, but first she should consider the guy's face. The guy didn't mind, but he was a little puzzled, and when he opened his face, the girl began to wipe his face with napkins, and after some cleaning and a mountain of napkins, the guy was already shining, and he was embarrassed by such attention. Looking at this handsome guy, the girl's eyes sparkled, and he disbelieved his eyes, said that it was just wow. After that, the girl immediately began to check his body and soon excitedly said that the guy not only has a beautiful face but also a pumped up body. From such mongrel touches, the guy shuddered and he looked at the girl with displeasure and thought about how long she was going to paw him at all. While the girl was happily talking about the fact that the guy is really not bad, the guy looked at her suspiciously. Licking her lips, the girl winked at Chu Nan and said that he was really handsome, it looks like she hit the jackpot. It was good that she found him before the scouts. Turning around, the girl asked the guy to follow her. After hearing about the scouts, Chu Nan was not so calm. He just hoped it wasn't some strip club. After a while, in a modern-looking coffee, a girl with beautiful legs and stockings was sitting in the office. At that moment there was a knock on her door and she told them to come in. The door opened and Chu Nan and that strange tan girl appeared there. The tan girl smiled and pointed at the guy and told Ming Yu's sister that she had found the person she asked for. Ming Yu's sister was a beautiful, graceful and graceful girl in a white blouse and a blue skirt. Looking at this lady, the guy couldn't help but think that she looks damn cute. Someone called a tan girl, who by the way called Meng Meng, that she quickly responded, leaving Chu Nan behind. The girls turned around and Ming Yu said suspiciously that although this guy looks like a handsome man, but Meng Meng should also take a look at his clothes. He's clearly an ordinary immigrant. The girl smiled and told Ming Yu not to demand the impossible from her. With such tight deadlines, this is the most she could find. The girl looked at the guy with discontent and said that she certainly does not look down on him. But what if he creates problems for them? Meng Meng said in a panic that did her sister still think that she could find an educated person for her. She doesn't want her identity to be known. Ming Yu still didn't want it and said that he looked like an ordinary simpleton, to which Ming Meng said that therefore it was for the best. As soon as his work is over, they will give him some money and send him away. 
While they were talking, Chu Nan was at a loss. In the end, Ming Yu agreed and a satisfied Meng Meng turned to the guy and said that they should start. The guy looked at them blankly and then Meng Meng pointed at Ming Yu and said that from that day on, this beauty would be his girlfriend. The guy was of course in shock. No, he just froze, not understanding what these two were talking about. What kind of girl are we talking about? The guy looked at the tan girl in disbelief and asked her about why she was saying that this girl would be his girlfriend. Shaking his head, Meng Meng told the guy to stop his fantasy. Before he sets up his love locks, she has something to tell him. Then Meng Meng explained that Ming Yu would be his fake girlfriend. Putting her hand on her friend's shoulder, the girl said that in fact Chu Nan would be her boyfriend on call. He will come to the right place at the right time. And that's all, nothing more will be required from him. The payment will be 10,000 yuan for each meeting. After hearing the amount of money, the guy immediately agreed, saying that the payment suits him, so he agrees. From such indifference, Meng Meng was slightly surprised and therefore, with suspicion, she asked him about why he agreed so easily. It's pretty suspicious, though. The guy spread his hands and asked what was the point of doubting. Delighted with his statement, Meng Meng cheerfully said that she did not doubt the guy. From this kind of her, the guy said that she was a little scary, but Meng Meng, ignoring him, told her sister that she was definitely not mistaken in choosing a candidate. Now Ming Yu was slightly flushed and playing with her locks of hair said that this guy was really good. The guy looking at this seductress could not help but think about the fact that she is a beauty. Then Meng Meng enthusiastically said that when a guy is not called, he is free to do whatever he wants, whether it suits him. The guy pulled out his pockets and said that it certainly suits him, but could they pay in advance? The enthusiastic Meng Meng poked her sister and shouted cheerfully that this guy was also poor. If she hadn't found him in time, he would have already starved to death. Chu Nan was annoyed by her statement, and Ming Yu looked at her friend as a fool, coughing dryly. The girl said that in any case, she should first take his personal data. Ming Yu smiled and stretched out her hand and asked the guy to give her an indication card. The guy awkwardly scratched his head and said that he didn't have it but he was eating a passport to see if it would fit. When the girl looked at his name, she burst out laughing, saying that he had a rather funny name. The guy, of course, was outraged, but Meng Meng, without paying attention, said that a passport would certainly do, but without an identification card, few places would be able to hire him. Is the guy a laborer? She had heard that there were many of them in the countryside. The girl left with a smile, saying that that was all. Then she said that the phone works 24 hours, so he can not be afraid to spend the balance on it. The girl then replenish it if it runs out of money. Then the guy stopped the girl and when she turned around, he asked her if she knew anything about Menchin University. The girl was surprised and turned around with a gloomy face. She asked the guy how he knew about this university. The surprised guy asked if this university was really some kind of secret. Then he added that he just needed to find a person. Meng Meng was silent for a second and then said that she could call a car for him. The guy asked why he needed it, but the girl did not answer. The car stopped and the driver informed Chu Nan that they were at the back of the university, to which the guy said that he understood and got out of the car. The guy, looking ahead, breathed a sigh of relief and said that he was finally here. At this time, in some alley, a blonde bandit shouted for some girl to give him all the cash. Next to the bandit, of course, was his group of sixes. The guy stopped at the alley after seeing this picture. The bandit threatened a pretty girl with black hair tied in a ponytail. The girl with droplets of tears pulled out everything she had from her backpack and said that this was all she had. The bandit even felt uncomfortable with the amount that she pulled out. The girl with the red face asked them to let her go. The bandit, enraged, shouted that this girl seemed to be mocking him. She clearly has something more valuable. Chu Nan was watching it all with a stony face. Folding his arms under his chest, he leaned against the wall and asked this bandit if he was an idiot or a madman. Why rob a man who looks like a beggar? If he was going to rob, he had to look for someone who looks like he's rich. The surprised girl looked at this smug guy and was covered with cold sweat running down her face. She wondered about who this guy was. Not only is he not trying to help, but he also called her poor. Not only does he teach them how to rob properly, apparently he is evil in the flesh. Unlike the blonde bandit girl, he didn't think so. He was extremely annoyed and looked at the guy and asked what he had said. Is this guy really looking for death? At that moment, one of the bandits' group asked his brother Ziu Mao about when their brother Yu Liang would return from America. After all, they can't do business here anymore. The bandit looked at the guy with purple hair. And now another guy from the group said that if they mess up, Yu Liang will wipe them into powder. Enraged by such panic, the guy said that he would kill anyone who interfered with them. Turning his head, the blonde asked the guy about what he thinks he will become a hero if he saves the girl. And the girl herself was scared to hell. Then three bandits shouted that they would all kill him at once, but they all flew away from just one of his fists. The surprised girl opened her mouth wide looking at the guy soaring in the sky and thought that it was incredible. The guy sighed and said that it looked like ordinary weaklings here, and he hadn't even warmed up. While the hooligans were shouting that they were in pain, the guy approached a pretty girl. 
The same awkwardly smiling thanked the guy for saving. The guy smiled shyly, awkwardly scratching his head and said that it was nothing. Then the guy asked her if she could answer his question. By chance, she does not know who is the most beautiful girl in this university. The girl blushing all over said that he did it on purpose, to which the guy uncomprehendingly tilted his head. The girl turned pale thinking about how this guy can kick people 3 meters up and not be filmed in action movies. A girl with a swollen vein, enraged, shouted that these guys were fulfilling his request to make him look like a prince on a white horse. From such a guy was in slight perplexity. And the girl, calling him a vile bandit, turned around and left panting with anger. The guy didn't understand why she behaved like that, because it's obvious nonsense. At that moment, someone put a hand on his shoulder, calling him and the guy instantly turned around on reflexes, grabbed that hand and wrapped it around, almost breaking it. The black-haired guy started crying and shouted that he didn't kill him. The black-haired guy shouted that he was a law-abiding citizen. A guy with a gloomy face asked him why. He called him and then the brunette smiled and said that he would look like that. The guy came from another university to find a local beauty. Then pointing to himself, the guy with a twinkle in his eyes said that if the guy was interested in some information, then he, Makeo, could help the guy with it. The guy is pretty beautiful, so Makeo will even give him a discount. Makeo was a local gossip from Bingcheng University. Smiling, he proudly said that no one knows more about the beauties of this university than he does. Although the guy could not trust him, he still asked about who the most beautiful girl in this university was. Smiling, Makeo said that everyone knows this, so he will not charge the guy for it but he would not need the guy's help in one case. The guy sighed and asked Makeo to speak. Soon in the nearest restaurant, Makeo raised his finger and said that there are only four beauties at the university worthy of being called the most beautiful. Then the guy said that he had already met one Chunan. The pretty brunette with a ponytail turned out to be Lin Zulo, an excellent student at the English department of the four main universities that are part of Mingcheng. She has never had a boyfriend. Well, if the guy understands what to talk about Makeo. Next comes Tao. Tao is a brown, haired woman with curly tails and beautiful red eyes. She is also one of the four main students of the university, and she is often called the little evil witch because she looks like a bandit. Then Makeo said that there are two more, but little is known about them. Then the guy asked Makeo about who was the best among them, to which he said that they were all beautiful because it was a sin to compare them. Then Makeo added that he had fulfilled his part of the deal, and now the guy has to help him move things. The guy sighed and said that how, he Chunan could get into this. Makeo, hearing his name, grinned and said that this guy has a rather rare name. And now, some time later, they were standing in front of a mountain of boxes of food. Looking at all this, Chunan asked in shock that it was really all his food. Is Makeo really going to open a store at the university? Grinning, the guy said that there was nothing large scale about it. He just decided to open a small stall. If they wear it together, they should be able to cope in 10 moves. The guy shook his head and said it was too long and started pulling the fabric. Seeing this, Makeo asked that the guy wants to drag everything on the fabric because it will tear. The guy at the same time was putting boxes on the fabric. After he finished, he picked up everything at once, from which Makeo's jaw almost fell to the floor. Turning around, the guy shouted that he drove. Makeo was stunned. At this time, in the place where the bandits were beaten, some guy with a gloomy face looked at these scum, becoming enraged, shouted that they were a bunch of scum. They have to get out. Clenching his teeth, Chen Xiao said that he didn't know who this guy was, but he would definitely pay for it. Makeo shouted at the university campus, telling Chu Nan to wait for him. Running with an incredibly strong and fast Chu Nano check, Makeo said that he could not only fight with the crowd, but also carry things quickly. Yes, he must have trained a lot. The guy still walking forward with such a load. Then stunning the students, said that this is called professional cargo transportation. And now the cargo was delivered to the place and the guy looked at Makeo and said that he had done what he was asked, so he would go. Makeo stared dumbfounded ahead and said he couldn't believe his eyes for the first time in his life. Turning around, he clenched his fist and told Chunan that he was just a wizard. They can cooperate, and the company divides in half. The guy smiled and said that well, he didn't mind working part-time, so he would be delighted. Besides, the job is not dusty, so they don't put extra money in it. Putting his hand on the guy's shoulder, Makeo raised his thumb and said that he knows that the guy is here to pick up girls, which means this job is just for him. Maybe he doesn't know, but a lot of beauties will come shopping tonight. Taking a pose, Makeo said that these mini skirts and these long white legs, but what is more important, Chunan himself continued after him, saying that these are huge breasts and a thin waist. Turning around, the guy was dumbfounded, and the girl Lin Zulu screamed that it was him again. He really is a pervert. On the cheek of the guy there was a red imprint of the girl's hand, which by the way itched a lot. Feeling itchy, the guy irritably said that it was very unpleasant, because he had saved this girl, and she was taking revenge on him in gratitude. Grinning, Makeo told the guy not to worry about it, 
because even a slap in the face from a school flower will turn into a blessing. But despite his words, Makeo was clearly funny and barely restrained his laughter. Then Makeo said that in the future the guy can follow him so that the school flower does not run away. Makeo Skinny Blanket said he talked to the uncle responsible for this, and from now on the guy will sleep in the warehouse where they will be stored. After hearing the guy, Chunan thanked his brother for this. While they were talking, the guy's phone rang and picking it up, the guy listened to who was there and what they wanted. It turned out to be Lai Meng Meng and she cheerfully announced that the guy had a task. Before Chunan could answer, the girl continued, telling him not to be late and come to their place at 10 o'clock, and then saying goodbye, she hung up. The very next day, as they promised, they met on the street next to that building. While the guy was standing in his black jacket, he was called by Lai Meng Meng in the same pink kipao. As soon as she found the guy with her eyes, she immediately grabbed his hand and ran in the other direction, saying that she would die from waiting for this moment. They should not be late for this shopping. The guy, unlike the girl, was not enthusiastic and the guy was surprised to hear about shopping. The guy asked Lai Meng Meng what she wanted to buy. At this, Chu Nan, feeling the proximity of the girl, blushed. The girl pointed to the pink boutique and holding the guy's hand said that tonight the guy has to accompany them to the banquet, so he can't wear these torn clothes. So she, Lai Meng Meng will choose the guy clothes that will fit him well. As soon as the lights went in, the bell on the door rang, and the owner, a man with a strange mustache and lipstick on his lips, not to mention a bald head and a pink t-shirt, turned around and greeted the visitors. Meng Meng smiled sweetly and clung to the guy's hand and told the owner, whom, by the way, she called a flower, that he would dress up Chun In today. The guy hearing his nickname and seeing him, all covered with goosebumps and turned pale. The flower itself, blushing, said that he was going to die right now because this boy was his favorite type. Feeling the delight that Chu Nan did not understand, the man said that looking at the face of this guy, people should feel that their inspiration is about to spill out. The guy still couldn't stand it and recoiled and shouted what this guy was doing. Putting his hand on his shoulder, the man said that he was done with inspiration and therefore it's time to dress up the guy. The theme will be the time of a hot and dangerous summer rose. And after a while, a guy in a strange suit came out of the locker room on his bare torso and took out a rose from where he strangely took a pose and said that this girl was destined to meet him today, because this is her last luck in life. Lai Meng Meng recoiled from his image and shouted that this was not the case, she needed to refresh herself a little. The man, embarrassed, said that well, if she wants to refresh herself, then there's nothing wrong with that, he can arrange everything. And so the theme changed to refreshing and gentle boy and, according to the man, his little daisy came out of the dressing room. Well, this time the guy was dressed more decently, but he was like a first grader smartass. Adjusting his dummy glasses, he asked if she had brought his school badge. Lai Meng Meng, seeing these clothes, screamed that she would never leave with these clothes. She makes her sweat and how can she even dress him like that when they go to a banquet? The guy said that now he understood. They should have said from the very beginning that they were going to a banquet. And that's how Chu Nan was tortured all day, saying that he was too naked or too bad. So the whole day passed and the evening came. Then the night was not long in coming. While they were dressing up there in the banquet hall, Ming Yu anxiously looked at the doorway thinking that they still hadn't come. While she was worried, some guy in glasses and a stylish suit put his hand on her shoulder and holding out a glass of wine asked about what was happening with Ming Yu and why she was so distracted. The girl turned around and then looked at the hand. And meanwhile the guy continued saying that his backyard is very beautiful, maybe he should take her there for a walk. At that very moment, the guy's hand was squeezed by another firm hand, which belonged to Chu Nan. After looking at the guy Chu Nan with a serious mien, he said that he could take his hand off his girlfriend. Ming Yu was glad and smiled and told Chu Nan that he had finally come. The guy smiled and put his arm around the girl's shoulder and said that he was doing some company business. So he was a little late. The girl, confused, said that it was no longer so important. Of course, the bespectacled man also followed all this. Pulling himself together, the bespectacled man said that he did not know that the girl had a boyfriend, why she had not introduced him before. The girl smiled awkwardly and said that it was because he was often busy abroad and rarely returned, so she could not tell anything about him. At that moment, the bespectacled man said something in English, and then Chunan frowned and asked what he had said. The girl immediately broke into a sweat thinking that it looks like everything will be revealed soon. Smiling, the bespectacled man said that really Mr. Chu does not know about English. If he doesn't even understand such simple sentences in English, how can he negotiate cooperation with foreign companies? Then the bespectacled man explained that he just asked him where he lives, what kind of business his family does. The girl doubtfully did not know what to say, but to her surprise, Chu Nanas began to speak in English. He said that the bespectacled man had just spoken this language. Then he added that he should apologize, because he only heard the phrase I don't have you. Still, it sounded dumb strange, so he didn't understand what the bespectacled man meant. 
Then Chu Nang continued in English, saying that there is nothing special about this, and his corporation owns several chain supermarkets, as well as provides logistics and delivery services. The bespectacled man smiled and said that it looked like he was wrong and Mr. Speak English. It was his fault that he underestimated Mr. What he said was in English, which he studied abroad. It's normal if he doesn't understand the words of the bespectacled man. To himself, the bespectacled man thought that it looks like this child wants to put him in his place. Chuckling, the guy said that if it was true, then they could continue talking in Chinese. While Chu Nan thought to himself that if this bespectacled man wanted to show off, then he was very soft. At this time, a loud voice was heard from the speakers wishing a good day to all the gentlemen here. Everyone turned around and saw a young guy in a gray suit and with a microphone in his hand. The guy thanked everyone for giving him and the Tao family a chance. He also thanked them for coming to take part in his cocktail party despite the busy guest schedule. Smiling, a young guy with beautiful purple eyes said that the guests may already know that a group of investors from Europe will soon arrive to invest in the study. By the way, this handsome youth was Tao Duo Duo, one of the four princes of Ming Cheng. Tao Duo Duo continued, saying that this is a very profitable commercial project, and he hopes that everyone here will do everything possible to join the business and it will be a victory for the Ming Cheng business community. Someone standing next to the bespectacled man said that it sounded great. Then the man with dark brown hair drank the wine and continued, saying that besides, not only the Tao family has an advantage, others can also have it. But after his flattering words, the man stroked his chin and said that Brother Tao's manners and speech were really becoming similar to his mother's behavior. He didn't come to their party today because Brother Tao looks down on everyone. This statement surprised the bespectacled man in turning around. He looked at the speaker and said that the Tao family is full of strange personalities and Tao Duo Duo presents himself as a representative of the younger generation of Ming Sheng. Then the bespectacled man turned around and pointed at Chu Nan and said that it was better for them not to talk about Tao Duo Duo, but rather to look at that guy. Seeing Chu Nan with the beauties, the brown-haired guy went berserk. By the way, his name is Chen Yangming and he is one of the four princes. Chen Yangming, his mouth twisted in displeasure, asked about why this guy is so close to Meng Meng. The bespectacled man raised his head and said that he was Ming Yu's boyfriend but he also had a good relationship with Meng Meng. They are very close. By the way, the bespectacled man was also one of the four princes and his name was Xiao Zai Yu. Clenching his fist, Chen Yongming, enraged, said that one woman was not enough for this bastard and he decided to take his girlfriend as well. With swollen veins, Chen Yongming said he just wouldn't leave it like that. He Chen Yongming is going to punch that mud in the head. At this time in another part of the hall, Meng Meng irritably poked the guy on the cheek and said that since he could speak English, then why didn't he say about it earlier? She thought that they would soon be discovered, which is why she was very scared. The guy laughed and said that he didn't know very much, he could just say a couple of sentences. At that moment, Chen Yongming came up to them and raised his hand and greeted Meng Meng with a smile, saying that they had not seen each other for a long time. Meng Meng's expression immediately deteriorated and with an indifferent face looking at this guy. He asked what he wanted. Holding up the black card, Chen Yongming said that he came over to say hello, and at the same time to give Lai Meng Meng a gift. The girl took the credit card, said that she was back, and she hadn't used the last one, and then smiling at Meng Meng said that but she was grateful anyway. Then the girl handed the card to Chu Nan, saying that it was for him. The guy thanked Meng Meng with a twinkle in his eyes. Chen Yong Ming, looking at this picture, was covered with cold sweat running down his face and thought about what kind of bastard this is. Restraining his emotions, Chen Yong Ming stretched out his hand and introduced himself to Chu Nan, and added that he runs a chain of stores. Then the guy asked about how he could call Chu Nan. Chu Nan also stretched out his hand, which Chen Yong Ming immediately squeezed. But Chu Nan, without even changing his face, said that his name was Chu Nan and he planned to manage a developing chain of stores in Ming Cheng. Chuckling, Chen Yong Ming said that he had just arrived from abroad and was already ready to open his own store chain in Ming Cheng. Chen Yong Ming tightened his arm even more, but Chu Nan still didn't change his face, smiling broadly. He said that his family owned a business in the Middle East and he was basically a bodyguard and owned a gun business. This revelation made Chen Yong Ming think that those who work with weapons are definitely not simpletons and lie, he felt pain in his arm. At that moment, Chu Nan squeezed his hand in response, which caused the pain to increase and Chen Yong Ming began to tremble and sweat. Pulling a smile, Chen Yong Ming told Brother Chu that they should let go of their hands, to which Chu Nan only smiled good-naturedly and said that he thought Brother Chen liked a handshake. How about holding it a little longer? While Chen Yongming felt that his spirit was leaving, Xiao Xiaoyu appeared at that moment and put his hand on Chen Yongming's shoulder and said that Brother Chu was really an enthusiast. Two grown men can make him laugh. 
Then Zai Oh Zai Yu looked at Ming Yu with a smile and said with a smile that regarding foreign investment, if the two of them reconcile, it will be a great success, won't it? The girl with a slightly frightened smile asked for forgiveness and said that she was not deciding this time. Zai oh Zai you shouldn't pay attention to this external cooperation, she still has to talk to her father. The bespectacled man didn't lag behind anyway, and added with a smile that she didn't have to worry, he could talk about it with Uncle Kai tomorrow, why don't they walk together today? The girl did not know what to say, and at that moment Chu Nan hugged her and asked for forgiveness, saying that Ming Yu had promised him to take him on a date tomorrow. The girl also smiled and asked for forgiveness. Zai oh Zai you certainly wouldn't have given up so easily, smiling broadly. He opened his hands and said that of course he had just returned from abroad and a lot of things had happened in his hometown. How about the three of them get to know Uncle Kai and then visit Mingchen together? At that moment, Ming Yu and Chu Nan shuddered and it did not slip past the eyes of the bespectacled man. The guy smiled and said that Chu Nan is Ming Yu's real boyfriend and why doesn't he want to meet the elders too or Uncle Kai doesn't agree with the two of them. The sky was dark, but the roads were lit by lamps. A white car was driving along the road and inside it were Chu Nan and two girls. Lai Meng Meng was driving and she didn't quite tell the guy not to talk nonsense next time. If this continues, next time he might even say that he is an arms dealer. If he brags a lot, he won't be able to turn things around. The guy didn't know what to say, but Ming Yu was in thought. Seeing her like this, Lai Meng Meng asked Ming Yu's sister about what they would do tomorrow. It's not like she's going to take Chu Nan to her uncle. At that moment, the guy felt something and looked out the window and shouted for them to be careful. The black car crashed into the white one from behind, causing the white car to turn around. Chu Nan immediately grabbed the Ministry of Justice so that she wouldn't get hurt. At that moment, the door opened and some guy with the appearance of a gorilla smiled and said that he had found it. Kai Meng Yu is here. But before the guy could reach him, Lai Meng Meng's fist smashed into his muzzle. Enraged, Meng Meng got out of the car and shouted, asking why they wanted to steal Kai Ming Yu Da, but first they had to pass by her. The demon lord killed too, but she was already very exhausted and exhaling with difficulty. At this time, Kai Ming Yu got out of the car with a guy and ran to her friend with concern. A girl with a serious face looking forward asked Chu Nan to take Ming Yu away from here, and at that very moment someone guffawed. Of course, it was Chu Nan himself. Lai Meng Meng turned around and saw Chu Nan take a pose and looked at him like an idiot. The guy, smiling broadly, said that who said it all that he could not cope with this bunch. She should let him deal with this situation. One of the opponents asked about who this idiot was. And the other grinned and asked if this situation really seemed funny to them. At this time, Lai Meng Meng and Chu Nan were arguing. Meng Meng told Chu Nan to hurry up because he couldn't beat them. To which the guy rolled up his sleeves and asked who said it. He would show everyone now. Slightly crouching down, the guy with a gloomy expression said that he Chu Nan never brags, but it doesn't mean that he can't do anything. A jerk and the cries of pain of the opponents began to be heard. Lai Meng Meng and Kai Ming Yu looked in shock at the bandits flying in the sky one after another, and after two minutes everything was over, and Chu Nan didn't even get a scratch. Smiling, he said that it was over, and the girl looked at him like a monster. Shocked, Lai Meng Meng asked the guy about where he learned to fight like that. Pulling Meng Meng to him, the guy asked her to let the guy take a look. The girl, confused by such closeness, asked what he was talking about, to which Chu Nan, looking at her bruises, asked what she was injured about. The girl was embarrassed and said that it was just a small scratch, it would heal in a few days. The guy immediately took out a jar from somewhere and said that he had an old bone restoration medicine and it was very useful. The girl looked doubtfully at the green mass, but then allowed the guy to apply it. Chu Nan, after applying mass to the bruised place, said that it burns when you start rubbing it a little. Is she okay? The girl smiled and raised her thumb and said that of course everything was fine with her, he could just smear and the guy seeing her like that just smiled. The next day in a huge corporation, in the director's office, a man with a gold ring and a light beard crossed his fingers and with a gloomy face asked Kai Ming Yu about what she said that she had a boyfriend. It was CEO Kai Yu Chen. The girl smiled and told her father that it was so and today she brought him to him. The guy was standing next to the girl and greeted his uncle with a smile. The man, unlike them, was not happy and slapping the table scared the girl. The man got up from his seat and asked the girl about why she didn't tell him about such an important thing. Both of them were not verbose, so the bespectacled Zio Zayu took the speech. Smiling, he said that he thought his uncle knew about it. While the girl bowed her head regretfully, Chu Nan looked at this Zio Zayu with suspicion, thinking that this bastard was ruining everything. Suddenly, Kai Yi Chen laughed and said that it was very good, which surprised all three of them. Laughing, Kai Yi Chen asked the guy that his name was Chu Nan, and then laughed again and said that it was a very good name. The guy, looking at this uncle, thought about why he was so vague. Then the old man invited them to sit in front of the table, which everyone did. Kai and Chen and Zio Zayu sat in single chairs, and a couple sat in a long chair. 
Then Kai Chen said that the three of them had gathered together today and there must be other things they wanted to discuss with him. Sai Oh Sai Yu smiled and said that they had arranged a meeting today and they had visited Uncle Kai to learn about the European Investment Group. After hearing this, Kai Yi Chen said that well, the European Business Group is really very important and it needs to be taken seriously. Smiling, the bespectacled man said to Uncle Kai and Chen that this time probably the Chunan family can help them with this European Business Group because it is located abroad. This statement left Kai Ming Yu sweating, and the guy again looked at Sai Oh Zai Yu with displeasure. The surprised old man said that it was a very good coincidence. Then he asked about what kind of business the Chunan family was doing and where they currently live. The guy smiled and wanted to say something, but the bespectacled man interrupted him and said that before Chunan started, he had to add something. Then Zai Oh Zai Yu said that Brother Chu has a very strong biography. His family is not limited to selling bodyguards in the Middle East. They also offer bodyguard services to some of the richest businessmen in the world. This is a huge problem. This background is definitely not simple. The guy looked at this bespectacled man with furrowed eyebrows. And meanwhile he was thinking that the Kai family is engaged in serious business and she would never accept the leader of the bodyguard organization. But to everyone's surprise, Kai Yi Chen said that this business is good. Then he looked at the guy and said that in fact, their family mining business had long wanted to go to the Middle East to do oil business. He heard that oil is everywhere. In their age, oil is equal to gold. From Kai and Chen's behavior, Zio Zaiyu was at a loss to think about what was wrong with this old man. What's the point of going to the Middle East when he's already running a good business? And then he said out loud that although the oil business is very profitable, but the risks are also high. He had heard that Tom was always chaos. If he buys an oil field, it is very likely that local terrorists or warlords can take it away. Then Kai Yi Chen said that didn't Chu Nan's nephew invite the old man to do business there. The guy smiled, clenched his fist and said that of course he would be glad. The bespectacled man looked doubtfully at the old man and thought that maybe because this old man is a serious businessman, he is still studying all these black enterprises. At the same time, Kai Ming Yu was thinking that it looked like her father had already guessed about their relationship with Chu Nan. He praised Chu Nan and helped her repel Zio Zai Yu's ambition. After a while in the same place, Kai Yi Chen asked Zio Zai Yu about what the guy meant and he smiled and said that he wanted to say that they should use some means to scare foreign people. If they refuse to cooperate, they may not even think of leaving Ming Cheng. Smiling, Kai Yi Chen said that he was afraid that it would not fit, to which Zio Zai Yu said that there was nothing inappropriate about it. He had taken inspiration from his uncle's words before. He wants to go to the Middle East to conduct oil business, but he is afraid that the local field commanders of the terrorist forces will take her. If they can capture then Keikai, Yang and Zai Oh Zai Yu can. Sai and Chen, hearing that they were inspired by him, was annoyed and thought about what kind of nonsense this guy was talking. It threatens the business and he still dares to say that he received inspiration from him. Smiling Zai Oh Zai Yu asked Uncle Kai Yi Chen about what he thought about what approach. To himself, the bespectacled man was thinking about what kind of things this old man likes, doesn't he like it? Kai Yi Chen had no choice but to agree and said he would think about it later. Looking at this guy, Chu Nan thought that Zai Oh Zai Yu was really a fool. After a while, four people were standing on the street and they were called from the bus. These four were Chu Nan, Lai Meng, Kai Ming Yu and Zai Oh Zai Yu. Lai Meng Meng came forward and asked Chen Yong Ming about what he had forgotten here. The guy smiled and told them to let him join in the fun. He deliberately harnessed the SMS RV today, and now they will be able to enjoy the scenery while eating. While Meng Meng was walking away to her friend, Chen Yongming looked at Chu Nan thinking that this time he wants the guy to disgrace himself. Covered with cold sweat running down his face, the guy wondered why this child was looking at him like that. The guy only hoped that he didn't fall in love with him. He heard that these brothers often control everything from behind the scenes. Despite Chen Yongming's invitation, Meng Meng said that they would get on her car, which is why Chen Yong Ming asked her why she did not want to take his bus, to which the girl said that they would have to drive through a tunnel to get to the zoo, and the guy's bus did not will be able to drive through the tunnel. Chen Yong Ming smiled and said that then they would all get into Lai Meng Meng's car, but she got into the car and said that there was not enough room for so many people and she would also need to change a little later. Of course, this did not please Chen Yong Ming, and seeing that they were leaving, he indignantly asked why then Chu Nan was going with them in the car, but they did not answer him. Flaming with rage, the guy said irritably that he was angry. At that moment, an officer approached his bus and put on a fine, which made the guy even more angry and asked what she was doing there. The officer said that you can't park here, because he has to clean up his vehicle right now. Chen Yongming shouted that he wanted to park right here, and that they would do something to him. Then the officer asked about that, that he would leave now, on his bus, to which he said that he would not do it for anything. Zio oh, Zai Yu was watching all this and didn't know what to say. And after a while, the bus was brought into the truck and began to be taken away. 
Zai Oh Zai Yu was speechless, and Chen Yangming said they could just take his car. The sun was shining brightly in the sky as always. Right now, many cars were passing through the bridge, and among them one was driven by Chu Nan, and two girls were sitting in the back seat. Looking at the black car driving behind Lai Ming Ming asked about why they were constantly chasing them. This one annoyed the girl very much. While they were driving, suddenly a jeep appeared from the side, which was driving straight at the guy's car. Chu Nan noticing him abruptly turned the steering wheel trying to avoid a collision and he managed to do it even though the car flew off the highway. The jeep crashed into a black car. Looking in that direction, Lai Meng Meng asked the guy about the fact that it can't be the same people as yesterday. The guy opened the door and told the girls to stay inside, and he would go check. When the guy came out, Chen Yang Ming was already heading with an angry gait towards the jeep, shouting at the driver of that car about what he was driving. Is he in a hurry to meet God or something? Zai Oh Zai Yu was also with Chen Yang Ming, but he was mostly a hot guy. Chen Yang Ming's veins bulged with rage, and therefore he shouted for that bastard to get out of the car. Today he will beat everything out of them, since they are a bunch of blind idiots. A powerful-looking bald guy with a mountain of muscle got out of the jeep and it was clear from the redness of his face that he had already drunk and was now drunk. Another exact replica of this one was sitting inside the jeep. After looking at Chen Yang Ming, the big guy picked him up with one hand and asked about what this brat said. From such pressure, Chen Yang Ming turned pale and was covered with cold sweat running down his face. Zai Oh Zai Yu staggered back. Before Chen Yang Ming could say anything, a huge fist flew into his face, and while he was being beaten by the first big guy, the second one got out of the jeep and the fist crashed into Zai Oh Zai Yu's face. While these four were fighting, or rather two were being beaten, Chu Nan came up and told them to stop fighting. Both big men looked in his direction, still holding their opponents, but Chu Nan continued, saying that they should prioritize peace and harmony. They must come to an amicable agreement. The enraged big guy asked the guy about who he thinks he is, and told him to mind his own damn business and get out of here, or he'll be the next chop. Of course, this did not please Chu Nan and, enraged, he beat up these two. And after a couple of minutes, two overgrown guys were lying on the asphalt in a pool of blood. The guy approached Chen Yongming and Zio Zaiyu, folding his arms under his chest, asked them if they were okay. Then they couldn't say anything from shock. At that moment, two girls came and first asked if the guy's Ming Ming was okay, to which Chu Nan said that everything was fine with him and it was easier than a turnip. On the other side, the bespectacled man clicked and Chen Yongming told his bro that they had made a mistake today. With abrasions on his face, Zai Oh Zai Yu said they should find a way to redeem themselves. The guy took out his phone and called some Lil Young and told him that they were in a picturesque safari area near the Ming City Zoo. He should hurry up and send some people here. In the parking space, two black cars blocked the road of a white car. Looking at them, Zai Oh Zai Yu smiled and said that the person he contacted was already here. It's time to put on a show and show yourself respect. Smiling, the bespectacled man thought that this time, he would definitely make Ming Yu fall in love with him. While the two girls were sitting quietly in their car, Chen Yang Ming shouted, who said that it looked like it was those drunks again. They both turned around and saw Zai Oh Zai Yu and Chen Yang Ming approaching the two black cars quickly in anger. Chen Yang Ming shouted that they seemed to have come for more. This time they would definitely not spare them. But before Chen Yang Ming could even wave his hand, the iron life crashed into poor Chen Yang Ming's face and blood splashed out from his mouth and nose. Having supported his brother, the bespectacled man with a pale face said that there was no need for this. To himself, the guy was thinking that maybe these are not his mercenaries. But he could not think for a long time, because the iron life crashed into his back, from which even his glasses fell out. At that moment, a message came to his phone saying that they were in traffic, so they would arrive later. The men in black, after beating up two guys, approached the girl's car and surrounded him. One of the men in black pulled out a gun and told Miss Kai Ming Yu to come out. She managed to escape yesterday, but they won't have that chance today. Inside the car, the girl clung to each other and frightened Meng Meng, covered with a cold sweat with a strong fright, screamed that these people were crazy. Kai Ming Yu said that because of her father's business, she was a little worried. Suddenly, Chu Nan shouted from behind the car. He was running away shouting that he didn't want to die. Both girls looked at him in silence. Then Lai Meng Meng irritably told Kai Ming Yu's sister that it looked like they had chosen the wrong person. The girl shook her head and told her friend not to blame Chu Nan, because it's still a gun. At that moment, a shot rang out and a bullet hit the inside of the car. The man in black said they didn't have time for this, so Miss Kai Ming Yu should go with them. The girl turned around and said she would go, but they had to promise not to touch Meng Meng. Worried, Meng Meng shouted that Ming Yu shouldn't do this, but the girl filled with determination said that she couldn't drag her into it. The girl, despite her words, was worried. Her hand was already covered with sweat from nerves. 
Touching the door handle, she remembered her childhood, when she still watched cartoons. Then she saw the prince rescuing the princess. Then she said admiringly that this prince was handsome. When she grows up, she will also have a prince who will save her in case of danger. She got out of the car and the man in black told her to get in the car. The girl approached the black car, the door of which was opened to her. Before that, the girl sat down. Her hand grabbed the gun and already the man in black was lying on the ground and his was Chunan. The surprised girl turned and looked at the guy in shock, to which he smiled and said not to worry, because he was here. With this, he hugged the girl, which made her embarrassed. Chu Nan, looking at the horses in black, which can be said to have been tied with a rope, asked whether it might be better for him to kill these guys or still better to call the cops. Hearing him, Lai Meng Meng looked at the guy and asked in surprise that he had watched some movies. What kind of murder is he talking about? Getting up from his seat, Xiao Xiyu said that he had never seen them before, and then looking at a friend who had difficulty getting up, asked if he was okay. Chen Yang Ming looked at his hand and said that he was fine. They didn't resist much. He saw how one of them was scared. While two guys were struggling to get up from their seats, two girls on the side were having a dialogue. Meng Meng asked Kai Ming Yu if they were a couple on the show, to which she said they could go, but only in such a way as not to arouse suspicion from others. The sun, as always, was radiant and the place in front of the cinema was no exception. Walking into the cinema, Lai Meng Meng said that they should hurry to the theater because the show will start soon. When they sat down, a man in a black top hat and a black tuxedo came out on the podium and said that for the first number, they would need the most beautiful girl in the hall. While the host was leading the program, Xiao Xiyu justified himself to Ming Yu, saying that he was telling the truth, that if he showed all of himself, then they would not have a chance. Who knew that he would be hit first? They are cunning bastards. Only Kai Ming Yu looked at him doubtfully. But the friend was supported by Chen Yang Ming saying that Xiao Xiyu was telling the truth. If they didn't use dirty tricks, they would have been swept away. Already annoyed, Lai Ming Ming told them to stop chatting and watch the show. The presenter also asked about who the spotlight will show revealing the most beautiful girl. And the spotlight stopped on Kai Ming Yu, which surprised her as well. The presenter shouted admiringly that the spotlight showed a real beauty. A man with a neat beard asked Ming Yu if Madam could come on stage. The girl was even grateful to this presenter, because she would finally get rid of this stubborn sheep in the person of Xiao Xiyu, and therefore gladly agreed. Seeing this, Xiao Xiyu wanted to stop her, saying that they were not finished yet, to which the girl told him to stop, because this is a rare opportunity to witness magic in person. Soon, Kai Mingyu was already on stage and the host said that this performance would be excellent. Then the presenter pointed to a chair and asked Mingyu to sit on it, and when she sat down, the presenter asked Kai Mingyu to look directly at the audience and not blink, which the girl did and then the presenter raised his red canvas and covered the girl with it. After sprinkling something on her head, the man told them to let him sow the seeds of magic. Then he added that he would raise this red cloth by counting to three. And so the report went and everyone was shouting from one to three. Lai Meng Meng was also very curious and with a mountain of corn in her mouth, she screamed three and when the cloth was lifted, a box with snakes appeared from under it, the snakes of which jumped out of it. Those who were in the front rows were the first to be shocked and shouted in fright that they were snakes. Someone else shouted that they should run away faster and now the crowd rushed out. While everyone was running away, Chu Nan stopped walking towards the stage looking for Kai Ming Yu. He easily fought off the snakes and when he came to the chair, he pushed it away and saw a passage under it. After tapping on it a couple of times, he realized that the strip under him was empty and then opened it. As soon as Chu Nan opened the door of the passage, someone shouted. The guy bent down and there he saw how the presenter was holding the screaming girl. Kai Ming Yu was walking away from the presenter shouting for him to let her go. The guy quickly blocked the way to the girl and, frowning, asked the presenter what he was trying to do. The surprised girl hiding behind the guy called him in surprise, and the leader, covered with cold sweat running down his face, laughed and then said that the young man did not understand everything correctly. He just wanted to get this girl out of here. With a gloomy face, the guy releasing the pressure asked if it was really true. The presenter, smiling broadly, ran away, saying that he would probably go. While the guy and the girl were looking at him, not knowing what to say, another voice came from above. Turning around, they saw Lai Meng Meng, who said with surprise that it turns out there was a secret hatch. The girl looking at the bottom said she was surprised that Chu Nan found him. He used to be an actor or something like that. Proudly raising his chin, the guy put one hand in his side and said that in fact he was the leader of an international criminal organization, and the actor was just his side job. While Kai Ming Yu looked at the guy in surprise, Lai Meng Meng asked the guy with skepticism about whether he really thinks she really believes it. The guy smiled and said that well, it's okay if she doesn't believe it. While he was talking, Kai Ming Yu noticed his hand holding her shoulder and blushed in embarrassment, but still didn't say anything. Xi Oh Xi Yu happily looked at Kai Ming Yu and said that she had finally come out, and he had been looking for her for a very long time. 
Pushing aside Chu Nan, the bespectacled man asked Ming Yu if she was okay. There are so many people on the street, so they didn't even notice that these people squeezed them out of the hall. Chen Yang Ming also approached Li Meng Meng said that his friend was telling the truth. Sighing, Kai Ming Yu said that all this makes her dizzy, so it's better for them to disperse. Zai oh Zai Yu wanted to say something, but the girl interrupted him and asked Chu Nan to go with her, and the guy put his arm around her shoulder and walked away. At this time, someone was watching them from the bushes. It was that presenter and he called someone and asked for forgiveness for the fact that he screwed up again. And he justified it by the fact that there is someone around the girl all the time. A man was standing behind the phone in the office, looking out his windows. He shouted that this guy was a cretin. He can't even catch one girl. How he wanted to hit this presenter. The host with an awkward smile said, Rai Shao, that it was quite difficult to catch this girl safe and sound. So wouldn't it be better for him to just kill Kai Ming Yu? Enraged, Rai Shao slapped the table with his palm and shouted that he was just an idiot and a bastard. If he just needed to get rid of her, then why was he hired at all? All Rai Shao wanted was to kidnap Kai Ming Yu for a while and then let him go again. He decided to give the presenter more time. But if he did not cope, Rai Shao would personally kill him from his screams. The presenter was scared. At that time, a white car was driving in another place on the road. Inside it, Lai Meng Meng and Kai Ming Yu sat in the back while Chu Nan led him. Meng Meng anxiously looking at the named sister asked her if she was okay. Kai Ming Yu sighed and said she was fine, just a little tired. At that moment, Chu Nan said that if she was hungry, then he had something for her. Then the guy threw bags of food on his ass. Looking at this food, Lai Meng Meng indignantly asked about how a guy could give Ming Yu's sister such cheap food. And Kai Ming Yu herself looked at these bags with interest. Smiling awkwardly, Chu Nan said that if they don't like it, they can just not eat. That's all. After a while they came to a posh house and the car stopped. After getting out of it, the guy wanted to leave, but Kai Mingyu told him that he could use this car as he wanted, from which Chu Nan was surprised. Smiling, he asked if she really wasn't joking. If that was the case, then he was really grateful. The girl looked away in embarrassment and thanked the guy for today. After all this, Chu Nan returned to the university and first of all went to Makao. When he saw Chu Nan, he said that he had finally returned, and after all, he had his hands full. Sweating all over, he held out two packages and said that these were orders that needed to be delivered. The guy holding out his hands asked if it was really that urgent, to which Makeo simply pointed to the pink package and said that he had to deliver it first. Makeo told the guy to take him to the third women's toilet on the second floor of the lecture hall. When the guy heard where he should take the package, he recoiled and looked at his friend in shock. He asked how he could and in general should get into it, it's a women's toilet. Smiling, Makeo told him not to sweat, because now the bell rang, which means there is no one in the toilet. Chu Nan was still in doubt, to which his friend said it was urgent, so the guy had to hurry. At this time, in one room, a purse, underwear and a bag of food that Dao Chu Nan was lying on the floor. Inside the shower, a beauty with gorgeous legs was basking in the shower. It was of course Kai Ming Yu. At the same time in another place, Chu Nan finally reached the designated place and asked if there was anyone here. Then he shouted that he had delivered sanitary napkins and who had ordered them. There are no other voices inside the toilet, because the guy shouted again saying that whether anyone was eating or not, the sanitary napkins they need are already here. These are super wipes for daily use. The girl who was inside confusedly told the guy not to scream and said that she was here and he could come in. The guy cautiously looking around came in like some kind of pervert, from which other people seeing him stopped. The guy went to the right booth and a voice came from the other side, saying that now she would open the door and he should put a package in front of her. The guy, still sweating, said he would. The door opened slightly and the guy held out the package, but the girl noticed that it was that bandit again. By the way, the girl was one of the flowers of Lin Zhu Law University. The guy slightly stuck his hand in, as she immediately closed the door, which is why she pinned his hand and the package fell on the trash. The outraged girl asked about what he had done, how she should use them now. The annoyed guy shouted that she didn't blame him. If she hadn't just closed the door, this wouldn't have happened. The sun was shining brightly in the sky and teachers were teaching classes at the university and students were studying. One girl was passing by the toilet and suddenly heard a sharp scream from there. A brown-haired woman with crimson eyes stopped and wondered why a man's voice was heard in the women's toilet. Suddenly, an angry female voice was heard shouting what the guy had done, and how could she use it now, to which the guy shouted not to take it out, if she had not closed the door, this would not have happened. At this time, the brown-haired woman listening to them froze and blushed all over, thinking that if this is what she thought, then did they do it in the toilet. Perversely smiling, the girl decided to make sure of it herself and tiptoed up to the booths while she was smiling nastily. The guy standing with his arm knocked off and the door shouted for her to open the door right away. Otherwise he would have to use force. At this time Lin Zulu was all red and thinking about what she should do and what if someone came in. She was too confused to think properly. 
The brown-haired woman approached them and asked about what they were doing there. They still hadn't finished. And then, looking at the hand, the girl asked with a perverse smile, about that, did they really have such a fetish? The girl from the toilet is trying to seduce, it's quite interesting. The guy saw this girl covered with cold sweat dripping down his face and embarrassedly said that this was not what she thought. The brown-haired woman turned her gaze to the guy's face and admiringly said that he turns out to be handsome. Moving closer to the booth, the brown-haired woman asked if he would let her see who was inside. After that, she peeked through the tunnel and admiringly said that it was really Lin Zulu herself. While the whole sweaty girl wanted to justify herself, the brown-haired woman admiringly said that she could not believe that she had such a hobby. She turns out to be quite a minx. Pulling out his hand, the guy looked indignantly at the brown-haired woman and said that she misunderstood everything. He was just a courier. The girl looked at the guy with mischievous eyes and said that for a courier, the guy has a rather unusual service. Then the brown-haired woman looked at Lin Zulu and said that she heard her screaming, Is the quality of service so good? Lin Zulu was very confused and did not know how to justify herself. Having failed to do this, she pushed the girl away and crying in rivulets shouted that the two of them were both scoundrels. The brown-haired woman recoiled and fell into the arms of Chu Nan. Annoyed, she screamed about how Lin Zulu dared to push her. Then Chu Nan explained that he was just delivering napkins. The girl did not understand what he was talking about, suddenly realized, and then looked at the guy with a smile and said that she believed him. The guy froze and thought that it looks like it's useless for this girl to explain something about divine weapons. Then the brown-haired woman asked the guy if he could leave his phone number, because who knows, maybe she will need his services. From such a guy just froze not knowing what to do. The next morning, someone was crying bitterly inside one of the dorm rooms at the university. It was Lin Su Lu. Burying her face in the pillow, she screamed that because of what happened yesterday, everyone at school was secretly talking about her. She can't even look them in the eye. A friend and for the same thing and the one who shares the same room with her, said Lin Zulo to calm down. It's all because Tao started rumors about her in the bar. The crying girl told Yuan that she really didn't know him. Lin Zulu's friend, the girl said that if she was talking about that guy being a courier, then why not ask him to help her explain everything? She doesn't think he would want to annoy her. At this time, Chu Nan himself was eating spicy noodles, and because of his sharpness, he sneezed. While he was eating in the noodle shop, some men who looked like bandits came in and kicked one of the tables and shouted calling the owner of the establishment because they had to tell him something. The owner of the noodle shop, who was an older man, came out and said that they came again, but they also paid for protection last week. Frowning, the bandit told the owner not to be stupid. After eating at his diner, his stomach ached and he had to go to three of the best hospitals. As a punishment, he has to pay him all his bills. The surprised hostess, the owner's wife, said that this was impossible because they never cook from expired products. At that moment, the bandit threw away one of the tables, which caused the mug that was standing on it to hit Chu Nan's table, and the spoon even hit his head. Meanwhile, having become enraged, the bandit shouted to the owner to drive the money or he would destroy everything here. The indignant owner shouted that they had already taken too much money from them and they did not owe them anything. From the statement of the owner, the bandit frowned and grabbed him by the scruff of the neck and said that now they are teaching this old man a lesson. At that moment, Lin Zulu came into the diner and seeing that her father was being threatened, she shouted at them to get away from her father and who they were in general. The surprised old man shouted that Lin Zulu did not interfere, but the bandit turned his head with a grin. The girl turned pale, but two bandits with perverted faces licked their lips and said that this old man had a beautiful daughter. If he allows them to have fun with her, then they will forgive him his debt. The old man pushing the girl away shouted for these bastards to move away from her daughter, and the old woman began to gnaw the fingers of the bandits. Seeing this, Lin Zulu anxiously shouted at them not to do this. But when the bandits had already grabbed the girl, the old man, enraged, grabbed a kitchen knife and went to the bandit shouted that he would kill him now. Suddenly, at this moment, money was handed in front of him and he stopped. It was Chu Nan who had already taken Lin Zulu away from the hands of bandits. Everyone froze looking at him and then the guy told the owner what a bowl of noodles and two pancakes. The bandits were very annoyed and all of them had swollen veins. One of them grabbed the guy by the scruff of the neck and asked if it really seemed to this guy that this was the right time to pay the bill. At this time, the owner's family moved aside. The guy, remembering something, opened his mouth in shock and then took out a toothpick right there and began brushing his teeth. This, of course, angered the bandits even more and the black-haired man, enraged, shouted that they should beat this guy. All three of them pounced on the guy and seeing this, Lin Zulu anxiously told him to dodge, but it was unnecessary. The guy raised his palm and in one motion slapped all three of them in the face, from which they flew into a knockout. The owner's family looked at him in mute shock, but before they said something, an officer appeared behind the guy and asked the guy that he had arranged everything here. Handcuffs were placed on the guy's hand and while the guy was perplexed, the officer said that the guy should go with her. 
Lin Zhu Lu was the first to recover and told the policewoman that she had misunderstood everything. Then the girl asked to be allowed to explain everything. And after a while, the girl explained everything and the officer said that this guy was involved in a fight. But if the girl said that he was trying to help them, then everything is fine. Lin Zhu Lu smiled and thanked them for their understanding. And when she turned around, there was no trace of Chu Nan. The surprised girl wondered where he went, but she wanted to thank him. Overnight at the university dormitory, the guy fell on the bed and shouted that he was tired. Students are buying too many products here. Just as he wanted to relax, his phone rang. The guy picked up the phone and asked Lai Meng if she really wanted him to be a fake guy again. Meng Meng said that this was not the case, and then asked Chu Nan if he could come to Kai Ming Yu's sister's house. She explained that something strange was happening here. The guy asked the girl for details while getting dressed, and she still said with concern that when she and Ming Yu arrived home, she did not leave the feeling that they were being followed. Lai Meng Meng was afraid that sister Ming Yu would start to worry, so she didn't tell her, but she thinks that these are the same people as yesterday. Then Lai Meng Meng added that it had nothing to do with their arrangement, so if he didn't want to come, she would understand. The guy got into the car and said he would be there in half an hour. When she finished the conversation, Kai Ming Yu asked her friend about who she had just talked to on the phone. Then the girl added that she had cut a watermelon, so she could start eating it sooner. Lai Meng Meng smiled and said that she had just invited Chu Nan to visit so that they could have some fun. At that time, a suspicious type was watching the house and he said into the dictaphone that he confirmed that only she and another girl were at home. At this time, inside the car, a subordinate asked the boss about why they couldn't grab her right now, to which the boss replied that they needed to wait until they fell asleep, only then they would start acting. At the same time, Chu Nan was under this car. When he went down, he thought about how Meng Meng's intuition did not disappoint. These are the same people as yesterday. Now the guy was curious about who was behind all this. Crawling out from under the car, the guy smiled and thought that last time Zio Zio was nearby and therefore he could not interrogate them, but this time they would not be so lucky. At this time, a brunette with a ponytail was walking down the street. She seems to have gone to the store because she had a grocery bag in her hand. And while she was walking, she noticed a suspicious type who was crawling out from under the car. Of course, she wondered why this man was hiding under the car. She immediately thought that if this is such a training, then it is very strange. At the same time, the guy tracked the man outside and decided to get rid of him first. And when he found him, he made him lose consciousness with a sharp jerk and a blow of the rib on his neck. Then he dragged him into an alley and completely searched him, found nothing useful. While in thoughtfully looked at the man's documents, the hand almost grabbed him, but on some reflexes, the guy turned around grabbed the girl by the hand and dragged her. When their eyes met, of course they recognized each other. The guy immediately said that it was that policeman and the girl, realizing that the guy had lost concentration, hit him with his knee in the knee, and then grabbed him and knocked him to the ground. Grabbing him, the girl said that she had caught this bandit. 